Hi, this is Joe Mullings with The Other Side. This morning I've got Mark Tolan from Corindus with us. And uh, Mark is uh, the CEO of Corindus, and that is now part of Siemens Health and Ears. And Mark's joining us from Boston this morning. Mark, thank you so much for taking time. Hey, thanks for having me, Joe. It's an honor to be here. It's always great working with you. Uh, I always appreciate the collaboration. Uh, you were uh, one of my uh, fine guests on uh, True Future when we covered robotics, right. and, and that was fun. And here we are back to sort of a uh, robotics telehealth world with what we're in the middle of right now. Yeah, it's an interesting time, no doubt. Uh, we'd first like to say, uh, just from Corindus and Siemens Health and Ears, our, our thoughts and prayers go out to the, the family members who have, who have uh, felt the pain of COVID-19, uh, either fighting it and or uh, um, feeling the wrath of it. And obviously the frontline members of the healthcare workers. So we want to say that on the front end. Um, as we think about uh, how it applies to our mission, our vision of, of broader access to care, um, it, uh, it has a, a profound impact on how we start to think about healthcare models of the future. Um, obviously, uh, we've seen a considerable amount of uh, uh, influx of, of people into the healthcare system. And I think one of the biggest challenges and problems that uh, we face is just this resource constraints and this flood of patients coming into our existing healthcare ecosystem and how we provide access to care is going to be critical, not just today as we fight COVID-19, but for the future as well. Yeah. And the telehealth solution that Corinda Springs started in right. the cath lab uh, on the interventional cardiology side and has now moved adeptly into the neuro stroke side. And you've been, you've been leading the charge of telehealth now for a few years. Yeah, we, you know, we, we look at the, one of the biggest unmet needs in healthcare is, is 80% of the world's population doesn't have timely access to specialized care. Um, and uh, as we think about uh, being able to use technology uh, to our advantage to bring physicians to patient versus patients to physicians, um, it expands a, a whole different model associated with delivering timely access to care in minutes versus hours or even days or weeks. And that provides uh, obviously better patient outcomes, uh, but it could, uh, it could enable uh, a whole different model of treatment. Um, you know, one of the things that um, we think about is um, typically hospital to hospital today, but uh, tomorrow it could be hospital to cruise ship. Um, and uh, that could be pretty profound if we, if you think about the care model in some of these remote locations uh, that uh, currently don't have access to care right now. Yeah, when you talk about access to care, I think you and I were thinking about access to care quite differently 60 days ago, and we right. usually would go to either remote or, uh, you know, you use that one example of uh, being in New York City in one of the five boroughs of Queens and not having a, right. a stroke response. We're, we're talking about right. access now block by block in That's our country. Right. Yeah, that's exactly right. When you start to think about the impact of, of the flood of patients going into hospitals right now, I've heard stories of uh, all surgical suites being transitioned into ICUs uh, just to uh, maintain some capacity. And uh, as we know, uh, in some of our big metropolitan areas, it's, uh, it's almost a, a war zone now. And when we were thinking about access to care, we were thinking about uh, emergent procedures like stroke and and uh, and heart attacks and and now we're uh, we're even broader than that. Um, but, you know, I've been very um, pleased to see the the government start to move quickly on telemedicine and some of the movements that they've made in the diagnostic arena. And as we think about what we're doing, which is mostly treatment, um, I think it opens up a whole new discussion on how we think about uh, delivering care. Yeah. And, and, and Siemens, um, who uh, Corindus is part of, has been taking a very active role in that. We were chatting before we went on air, and yeah. you were sharing me some, some pretty impressive activities going. Would you mind sharing that with the viewers? Yeah. Um, you know, it's really uh, uh, encouraging to see our broader organization, Siemens Health and Ears, uh, stepping up in so many different ways. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I've been uh, pleased to see is just as a backdrop, uh, about 80% of the Siemens Health Air's business is in the 
you know, diag diagnosis area. Um, but they have rapidly started to move uh, in terms of manufacturing for blood analyzers, CTs, um, uh, angio systems. But one of the things that I think is really encouraging is combining uh, their AI capabilities uh, with uh, some of the technologies to pre be a predictor for lung capacity. Um, and they've moved very swiftly on that to the point where um, uh, we likely will be uh, bringing that to the market uh, within a week uh, or two. Uh, and essentially what that means is you can, you can do an algorithm associated with a, a scan of the lung and determine the capacity of that lung to uh, predict whether or not that patient uh, with COVID-19 is going to be on the severe end uh, of lung capacity issues uh, or the, the lesser severe end of lung capacity issues. And that would have normally taken, um, you know, several hours by a, a physician to read. That, and that, that's going to be a very important predictive analytics tool and preemptive yeah. tool because if we, it looks like if we can stay ahead of this with the data we have right now and the in the, in the current situation. If we can stay ahead of that, uh, because otherwise it becomes a slippery slope once a patient gets beyond a certain point in that uh, sort of journey. Yeah, that's exactly right. If you can predict severity uh, prior to um, a treatment, uh, then it gives you a whole roadmap of, of success on how you think about treating that patient uh, before you even uh, go down the pathway. You know, COVID-19 is so new to everybody. Um, we, we, we can use, uh, obviously, uh, some predictors of what we've learned, but uh, probably most importantly, um, as we think about the, the patient care, uh, time is of the essence. Um, and particularly when we're so resource constrained, um, you want to make sure that you're treating the most severe patients quickly so that uh, there's no gaps in uh, their ability to recover. Yeah, and setting that triage up, I'm just thinking it through. I was on the phone with Israel yesterday, and they are quickly triaging patients to make sure that because they're resource constrained, just as we are, uh, right. what is that ICU bed and who should get in that ICU bed and when right. can I turn that ICU bed or can I put somebody in a less severe situation? Yeah, that's exactly correct. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> so this, this is a very accelerated pathway, right, which is atypical. Right. And, and it looks like there's a number of agencies working together organizations yeah. working together. Ha have you seen a, a response that you've never seen before from our partners? Yeah, that's one of the silver linings in this, if there are too many of them. Um, you know, I've been in healthcare for almost 30 years. And over the course of the 30 years, I've continued to see uh, walls put in place between entities. Uh, and I believe that that is uh, limited uh, healthcare's uh, ability to move faster in the technology arena and adopting technology. Uh, but if you take a look at the constituents of solidarity and quite honestly, courage right now and blending of the minds, you've got, uh, it, it's really impressive. You've got the clinical community, you've got the being the physicians, you've got the hospitals, you've got industry uh, being, you know, companies like Siemens Health and Ears, You've got regulatory bodies like the FDA and other regulatory bodies around the world. You've got companies outside of healthcare like you know Ford and Tesla uh, and others that are chipping in to make masks. And then you've got society that are all coming together to fight COVID-19. Uh, we've never seen that in the history of, of 30 years. As a matter of fact, instead of going further apart uh, uh, in, in healthcare, we're, we're starting to see this uh, unity that's following and a good example of that is uh, Siemens Health and Ears has had the FDA proactively reach out to, uh, to us to see how uh, they might be able to help um, versus uh, uh, reactive, which is uh, historically the case from uh, the last uh, several decades of, of working with our own regulatory agency in the United States. So uh, I, I'm hoping that continues as we continue to uh, fight other disease states uh, throughout the course of uh, the coming years. Uh, but this could be an inflection point of, of solidarity amongst multiple constituents that brings us all together. Yeah, and I, and <clears throat> I tend to agree with you is uh, this is one of those few silver linings here that we're hoping we don't move backwards with the uh, right. advent and the acceptance of telehealth, that we don't move backwards in 
always keeping the patient in mind, but also there are other ways to expedite our process in order to get standard of care and actually, you know, exceed the current standard of care uh, to the patient. And probably most of all is, is, is stop being so divided um, as a people, as a nation, as a world. Yeah, that's exactly right. I, you know, the, I use an analogy to the airline industry a lot. Um, you know, the airline industry was, um, you know, a very uh, manual uh, uh, industry 20, 25 years ago, and it created variance in safety. Um, and, and when you take a look at their industry and how much they adopted technology and moved so rapidly, but did it arm in arm with regulatory bodies and agencies to insert, ensure we did it in a, in a proper way across the world. Um, that's a perfect example of, of what, where healthcare could take uh, this unity that's coming and go arm in arm. This is how we think about solving um, access to care around the world, not just from a diagnosis standpoint, but also from a treatment standpoint. Yeah. Mark, you and I have been in this industry for uh, three decades now, and um, yeah. we've always been aware of what's gone on. I mean, your, your career at Boston Sci, you were saving lives with your team and improving lives. And we always felt like uh, we never needed to be up front and center, uh, the work we were doing as an industry. And you know this, people don't leave this industry when they come into it. And it's not they're not staying for the money, it's for the difference they make. Do you think that the industry in, in general, healthcare, med tech, biotech, pharma, is going to be viewed differently by the rest of the world? And will there be more rock stars and people indexing towards this because of what we're going through right now? Absolutely. I think one of the key elements of, of us moving to, uh, as, as you've termed this uh, uh, webcast as the other side, is going to be how quickly we move to uh, some sort of vaccine. A vaccine would tr traditionally take uh, close to six to seven years. And uh, as you've heard from uh, Alex from J&J, &J, uh, there's an opportunity to potentially have something in trials in September and in use uh, in 2021. That's really remarkable. And, and that's a great example of the unity that's happening between regulatory bodies, uh, industry, physicians, society, and solving a, a, a massive uh, catastrophic event that we've got in front of us. If we continue to apply the same logic to some of the unmet needs in healthcare, like, like stroke, as an example, um, we can really save a lot of lives across the world. And um, that's not gonna happen overnight, obviously, but the technology uh, exists. And that's our opportunity is to uh, unite uh, all these entities together to try to solve these problems uh, faster than decades and, and do it in, uh, in a year. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. And to that point, um, you're, you're, you're in the middle of a battle like all CEOs are in every industry, not just the med tech industry. Yeah. Uh, as a leader of a uh, very progressive med tech firm in the middle of clinical initiatives, uh, pushing uh, our stroke platform forward, certainly a very complex situation. What, a, what guidance would you give to other CEOs who are either coming out of the gate in an A round financing or a late stage company that's 50 to 100 million in sales and may not have billion right. dollars to fall back on? Guidance? Yeah, it's a great question and uh, it's a hard one to answer. I think it changes day to day. Um, one of the things that uh, we've tried to instill uh, in uh, our Corindus people is uh, as is trying to maintain the utmost respect for what's happening in the healthcare ecosystem today. So uh, how can we help? How can we um, get out of your way to a degree? Uh, how can we ensure that um, uh, all of the efforts uh, are going towards um, uh, fighting COVID-19? So we first tried to protect our employees. Uh, then we've tried to be as respectful as we can with our healthcare partners that are currently working with us. Uh, we're using virtual uh, capabilities, even into hospitals during procedures right now via FaceTime. Um, so using technology to our advantage and having the utmost respect for what's going on in the world is probably the most critical thing. Secondarily, uh, we've maintained, uh, I think, uh, constant communication with our teams um, via this virtual world that we're in. I think that connection is important. I think transparency of what's happening happening is important. 
that transparency needs to come from the top and uh, constant touch points with your teams are, are very important. Um, and then finally, as you think about the economics of, of healthcare, uh, you know, just be nimble. I think that the healthcare ecosystem is going to change forever. And the more you can adapt your organization and have the flexibility to do so, the more you're going to have uh, success in the, in the new world that we're all going to live in. Mm, yeah, sage advice and sage insight for sure. Well, Mark, I appreciate your time this morning. Um, I want you and your family and your team up there in Boston to stay safe. Great. All right. Thanks for having me, Joe. You bet. Be well. All right. Thanks. This has been Joe Mullings with The Other Side.